Hello everybody and welcome to the conference championship round of the 2017 NFL season. I'm your host Cody P. Wow. Talk about a thrilling week last week. We had uh, Atlanta being able, unable to score much of anything against a Philly team at home who was down there, main quarterback, as we all know, for the last couple of weeks. We had New England being New England telling us, hey, Tennessee, you're, you're, you're cute, but no. Uh, we had Jacksonville going into Heinz Field and upsetting Pittsburgh again. And then we had what many like to call the Minneapolis Miracle. He's going to try to work the ball on the boundary. Tandem steps into it. Pass is caught. Diggs! Sideline! Touchdown! Unbelievable! Vikings win it! So, we have that. Let's go over last week. Um, straight up 2-2. Two and two. I wanted to take Jacksonville, something told me, eh, stay off. Because, again, we all saw how Blake Boyle performed against the Buffalo Bills. We, we, we weren't thinking that was going to, yeah, no. And then, yeah, Philly letting us know, hey, just because we have Nick Foles doesn't mean we still can't do good. Hey, Nick Foles got to play off before Dak first got. I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying. And then against the spread, um, due to the Minneapolis Miracle, and them not going for an extra point or two point anniversary, when I took it at five, it stayed at five, so it's a, push, I guess. I've never actually had to deal with a tie for the spread thing before, so I believe it's a push. Um, and then over-unders, um, the Pittsburgh and Jacksonville game was totaled at 41. Both teams scored over 41 points. So, <laughs> a. But, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it. Now we're going to go into the conference championship games. Wow, we're gonna have some very interesting games. A lot of t had I told had I told you at the start of this year that the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Minnesota Vikings, with essentially their third string quarterback, and the Philadelphia Eagles would be three of the top four remaining teams left for contention at the Super Bowl. Y'all call me crazy. But it happens. So we're gonna go down, do the first things first. We have Jacksonville visiting New England. The Pats are 7.5 point favorites, and the over-under total is 46. Now, the line opened up around 9-ish or something like that, but since there's been speculation going around about Tom Brady's injury, people are starting to get a little, uh, mm. Now, New England, they're rightfully favored. They're essentially a better team, more or less. They're, they're more experienced, they're done the blah, blah, blah. We've heard of a million times they've been going to the Super Bowl since I've been born. Okay, not entirely true, but hey, whatever. Um, but yeah, they've they've done this for forever. It's this is nothing new. And Jacksonville, maybe might not be the best team. I mean, Pittsburgh probably would have been, had a better chance. But then again, maybe not. Who knows? Jacksonville, though, as compared to Pittsburgh, Jacksonville has a defense. Ignore the fact that forty-two points scored on them. Ignore that. It's Pittsburgh. They have AB, Juju, and all of them. You're not going to stop them. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Jacksonville, though, they, they have one of the better, if not the best defense in the NFL. Argue with Minnesota. Other than that, it's not much to it. Um, Blake Bortles, if he can perform like he did against Pittsburgh, I mean, maybe they'll get the benefit of the doubt. But whether or not the NFL, or whether or not the Patriots are screwing with us and just trying to give everyone a false hope, it's been acknowledged that something's up with Tom Brady's hand. Something's up, and it's not right, so... Chances are something could happen. Something... Maybe he's not as accurate, maybe... He'll play, he'll play. And he'll be fine, essentially. I have no... No, no, yeah. He'll be fine. Um, as a person growing up as a bona fide... New England hater. The only team I hate more than the Patriots is Seattle with their annoying fan base and Cincinnati who are just, I'm not going to swear on here, but very, very unlikable people. I don't know. Ever watching that wild card game against Pittsburgh a couple years ago where people were throwing crap at Big Ben when he got injured? Uh, I, I just don't like when people throw stuff to the players. And, and it was awful. 
Seattle was a bunch of D-bags, and even the got game Jacksonville, that kind of hurt me too, but I don't know. I I can't make much. But I don't have faith in Jacksonville. Like, I think their defense could do stuff, but their offense, you got to play near perfect, and I don't think they know. But I think since Brady's been a little compromised and this defense is good, and I'm still going to count Brady's age of 40 being relevant to this, I think Jacksonville will make it a close game. So, and chances are both teams will probably drop 20. Chances are it's possible. So, I'm going to risk the biscuit. We're going to take New England straight up. We'll take Jacksonville to cover the spread, so plus the 7.5. And, and we're going to take over the 46. Alright. And out of the NFC Championship game, the Minnesota Vikings head to Philadelphia. How the hell did Philadelphia win? Home field advantage must mean something, apparently. Or Matt Ryan's just a bona fide show card that we all know and love. I mean, hey, at least he got back to the playoffs, unlike some teams who lose their Super Bowl. But, um, Minnesota is favored, so the Eagles are underdogs at home again. So the Eagles fans are going to be wearing their dog masks like crazy. And the total for this is 38.5. A, a very low score, but these are two teams who are widely known for their defense, and their offense doesn't typically score a lot of points. Case Keenum does get credit, give Case Keenum credit for everything he's done, because, wow. It, it, you don't see this stuff. I mean, yes, they're also writing a great defense, but Case Keenum has also done a phenomenal job being the quarterback. 11-3 as a starter, taking care of business, pretty much took over for Sam Bradford in the second half of the Bears game, when you could tell Sam Bradford was not ready. He won that game, so essentially he's 12-3. But then Sam Bradford also got the weak ones. That Ignore that. They got Case Keenum, he's doing good. Sam Bradford, who... When fully healthy and fully reasonable, is a decent enough quarterback, and then Teddy Bridgewater as well. But, yeah, they have a very decent quarterback game. And they're all going to be free agents at the end of this year, so it's going to be interesting to see who Minnesota keeps. But, um, home field advantage may give Philly the benefit of the doubt, but Minnesota, I think, is a more complete team. Now, again, if this was Carson Wentz, we're talking about Philly. That's a whole different ball game. But it's Nick Foles, and Nick Foles... As much as you want to give him credit, he's... I don't have faith in him. Well, like, just because we haven't seen him as much as often as lately, I pretty much have more faith in Blake Bortles right now than I do Nick Foles. Call me out for it, Internet. I dare you. But... <clears throat> Minnesota's defense, a lot more tricky than, than Atlanta's. So you're not going to get away with as many plays as you got gotten away before. And if you even look at some of the, the highlights... They've had some miracle plays. Philly had some miracle plays in Atlanta to screw up in some ways just so that they can get where they got. Minnesota, I think, is a more smarter team, more or less. And people want to say, yeah, but they almost threw away the game against the Saints and it took a miracle. Well, again, in my opinion, the Saints are better than Philly. Whether that, whether the home field advantage will technically make them better or not, I do not trust Philadelphia. But I do think... Oof, I don't know... Well, Minnesota's tricky, because, like, they can score a lot of offensive points, but Philly also has a great defense, but then they have a, there's this feeling that Nick Foles may turn the ball. I mean, if the Vikings may Drew Brees turn the ball over, imagine what Nick Foles is going to end up doing. It's a little risky, but I'm going I'm to work with it. So I'm going to take Minnesota straight up. Three points, that's not a whole lot to ask. So they will cover the spread, minus three. And I'm going to take over the 30 and a half, because... Yeah, it's a bunch of defensive battling out, but chances are, I think, there will be a good three, four touchdowns. Five, maybe. I don't know. Wait, that makes no sense. Anywho, Jake Elliott's good. Kai Forbath wants to try to be a part of the building process to help Minnesota. I mean, if this spread was 42, I might consider the under. But 38, I think they'll do just enough to get over. Like, along the lines of maybe a 21-18 to 18 battle. Maybe. Or like... 24-17. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Philly will score. Whether they like it or not. Give them the benefit of that. Alright. Again, we're going to do this quickly. Here, just recap. Um, New England straight up. Jacksonville against the spread. Over the 46. Minnesota straight up. Minnesota minus 3. And over the 38.5. And, 
So, yes, I am predicting essentially a Patriots Vikings Super Bowl. Now, I'm going to say a couple things before I go. <sighs> to the people who keep saying the NFL is rigged, or people are throwing games on purpose, or whatever, shut up. Like, in all honesty, please shut up. The NFL is not rigged. There's a video going around the saying Cameron Jordan purposely avoided trying to sack Case Keenum just so that play can happen. You're telling me Cam Jordan, one of the most respected players in the world, one of the more be better players in the world, and all that, purposely missed a potential sack just because he wants the Vikings to win. But, plus, nothing is given. Who says Stefan Diggs makes that catch? Not every receiver can make that catch. You're relying on the receiver to catch. That, that's a chance. Because drops happen. They happen. No receiver is perfect. Timing could be off, whatever. A lot of things can happen in football. You can't say it's rigged. NBA can't rig... You, you can't rig sports events. Because I would assume that they do... Go. The only way you could rig a game is if you do a run play and the defense is just like, nope, we're not going to tackle him. And he runs it all the way up to the touchdown. But... Other than that, you, you can't rig it, because not every receiver, because you can't get, assume the receiver is always going to catch the ball. But, whatever. People are going to complain. And also, another thing, people who are saying that the NFL is going to lose ratings because if Brady doesn't make the Super Bowl, who cares? You're going to tell me you didn't like Joe Flacco versus Colin Kaepernick a couple of years ago? Now, I'll give you the, you know, the Brady's and the Eli's. Eli upsetting Brady twice? I mean, I guess maybe because of Brady. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. My point is, if the Jaguars make the Super Bowl, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. There might be a low scoring one, but you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I hope the Patriots lose, personally. And yes, I am wearing a Ducks 2015 college championship appearance. There is a, it is number 8, so it is Mariota, but it does not the actual Mariota. It doesn't have his name on the back. But it was a lot cheaper because it was only 40 bucks. What can I say? I tell you, I root for Oregon players. So, the only reason I root for the Patriots whenever is because Brandon Cooks is Oregon State. Which, I'm literally two or three miles away from the stadium of or where he played college ball. Hey, I, I like to root for Oregon players. Although Kiko Alonso hitting my boy Flacco, it kind of hurt me on an emotional level. Oh, whatever. See y'all in the Super Bowl. CRP out. Is going to try to work the ball on the boundary. Daniel steps into it. Pass is caught.